morning again, everyone. Good morning and welcome to the Taste of Transportation Lunch series. You know, before we get started, I want to start off with a little bit of humor this morning. As spring break comes to a close, you know, I've been telling you my son has become a comedian himself. So he's always trying to tell me something. My son is like 10 years old. So he's always trying to say something. So I want to share this one with you, right? So he comes to me, he says, Dad, I had a joke. I said, okay, tell me the joke. He says, a veggie burger walks into the bar and orders a drink. The bartender says, sorry, we don't serve food here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <we're> just... <laughs> Do you... <laughs> Are you probably got the same look I got on my face, right? We don't serve food here. All right. Good morning to all of our guests, aka taste testers, and welcome. And I would like to wish everyone a happy April and a happy Earth Month. I am Paul Chance, the public involvement officer for the Miami Dade Transportation Planning Organization, also known as the TPO. And I'm also known as Host Chance. Welcome to the sixth edition of the Taste of Transportation Lunch Series. If you have joined us in the past, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. I hope this lunch series is even more appetizing than the last one. Normally, we're out in the community hosting the TPO and partners Smart Transportation Fair. However, due to the pandemic, we have moved our Transportation Fair to this virtual Taste of Transportation lunch series. Yummy, yummy for the tummy. So get ready. There are seven virtual segments in this series. We are currently on number six. This has given us the opportunity to connect and inform you about transportation related projects and programs in seven. I put that hand up right here, that's, that's more, right? Seven, <laughs> seven different transportation planning areas, better known as TPAs. Today, we have invited our sister agencies to talk about their latest transportation projects, programs and resources in TPA six, which includes the city of Sweetwater and unincorporated municipality service areas. But before we get started, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's Earth Month and I'm, I'm smelling a certain type of aroma in the air. Is that curry? I'm smelling TPO Master Chef. Are you in the kitchen again? What am I smelling? Oh no, Hose Chance. What you are smelling is a whole lot of transportation with a side of my personal favorite, chickpea curry. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Get ready to all of the taste testers to smell what the TPO is cooking with a little bit of curry on top. <laughs> Thank you, TPO Master Chef. I'd like to share with you what we have been cooking up at the Miami Day TPO with our smart demonstration projects that creates first and last mile opportunities in TPA 6. If you look at the top of the map moving down, there are several smart plan transportation on demand projects servicing the TPA 6 area. We have the Doral FIU trolley, the FIU Panther Station to Dolphin Station Express, the FIU Panther Station, West Dade Circulator, and the Metro Rail Area On Demand Service. Now that you have had a taste of the TPO Smart Plan demonstration project in TPA 6. Let's get ready for the main course. Each part
partner will provide you with a small taste of what's on their menu for about two to three minutes. We will then open the floor for one to two appropriate questions about their fixings. If you have any questions or comments, use the question feature on your panel. Please include your email address so we can respond to you with a reply from the appropriate agency. And now, without further ado, our first transportation partner representing the Miami-Dade Aviation Department. Mark, good morning and Mark, happy Earth Day. And what would you like to place on the TPO lunch menu this morning? Good morning, Paul. I just have one comment. Don't quit your day job. Make a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I'm Mark Henderson, Community Relations Coordinator and Media Relations for Miami International Airport and a system of airports throughout Miami-Dade County. Today, we take a look at Miami Executive Airport, formerly known as Kendall Tamiami Executive Airport. The airport was opened in 1967 and is home to several fixed-based operations, or what we call FBOs, Miami's Miami County's Miami-Dade County, excuse me, uh, Fire Rescue and the Miami-Dade Police Department's Aviation Helicopter Unit. In addition, the airport boasts the only aviation museum in the region. The museum, originally opened as the Weeks Air Museum, is now known as Wings Over Miami. The museum contains Ventures aircraft all in flying condition. The collection includes an F-14 Tomcat jet, consolidated PBY-5A Catalina, and a Soviet Union Cold War MiG-21 jet. The museum encourages preservation, housing, and active flight of warbirds and classic aircraft in a general aviation setting. The museum seeks to share the story of military and general aviation through flight, interaction with aviators, by educational opportunities, and a display of pertinent artifacts. Wings Over Miami is also home to the Civil Air Patrol. The airport was originally located on what is now the campus of Florida International University South Campus. The airport was virtually destroyed by Hurricane Andrew back in 1992, but buildings have either been restored are replaced. At the time of the hurricane, most of the aircraft traffic was propeller-driven aircraft. While that is still the case, there is an increase of corporate and private jets. TMB, or the, the uh, Tammy, uh, Tamiami Executive Airport, and TMB stands for the code for that airport, houses an FAA tower, which currently is located on the west end of the airport. The tower is slated to be moved to a new location on airport within the final selection to take place in August of this year. There is also a companion FAA-run Miami Automated International Flight Station, which handles flights when the tower is closed. Miami Executive Airport is slated for some additional improvements in the form of extension of a taxiway to the west and shortening the diagonal runway by 200 feet. Also, fixed space operator FIC, IFC is planning to expand their existing facilities and maintenance hangars. They handle aircraft as well and their passengers. Folks, have a great day. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Great information. And you know, I plan on holding on to the day job for a little while. <laughs> 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 Be good. <laughs> Listen, the next you won't ever look at a busy a busy sandwich the same again. Let's look like <laughs> same exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right, Mark, you know the routine here. Let's go to our TPO Master Chef. Are there any questions about Mark's item or fixing? Let's see, host chance. Let's see what we have. Yes, here we go. Have you Mark, have you seen an increase in flights at Miami Executive Airport in the last few months? Um, no, we're still somewhat down as opposed to pre-COVID COVID totals. 
um, hopefully that will increase as we get further away from this pandemic and people begin to fly again. Uh, that actually goes for not only um, Kendall Town, Miami, but it also goes for Miami International and uh, and Opelika. Those are the bigger of the, the those are the bigger of the airports. We also have um, Homestead General and uh, Training and Transition, which is all the way out uh, between Collier County and uh, Miami Miami Dade County. Homestead General, which is not the uh, Air Force Base, but is located right up against the Everglades, um, has a much smaller footprint in terms of aircraft, uh, but it also has uh, what we call, uh, excuse me, light aircraft and also um, gliders. I'm sorry, not gliders, uh, skydivers. Oh, interesting. Well, thank you, Mark, so much. Uh, I'm going to have to go out there and try some skydiving. I don't think I've ever done that. Post chance. Huh. I think we're going to have to go try some skydiving. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Let's and do I, it. And I, and, I, and I actually misspoke on something. It's ultralights. Excuse me. Not a, oh, a light okay. Ultralights. Ultra, that, ultra, that's ultra, more ultra, my ultra, speed. Ultralights. And these are the ones that are um, to a large degree homemade. Uh, they actually have their own grass runway. Out at out at Homestead, they don't land on the uh, you know the asphalt, but they land they land on the grass and take off from the grass. Uh, ultralights are fun. I've I've had a chance to go up uh, at least once uh, in an ultralight, so it's you know it's 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 an interesting experience. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you, Mark, so much. Um, post chance, that's all I have. All right, thank you again. Thank you again, TPO Master Chef. Thank you, Mark, for joining us. We'll see you on You're the next welcome. time around for the next lunch Sounds series. Thank Sounds you. good to me. All right. We have our next transportation partner from the Citizens Independent Transportation Trust. Good morning, Carla, and happy Earth Day, or uh, happy Earth Month. <laughs> what would you like to place on the TPO lunch menu this morning? Good morning, host Chance. I am so pleased to be here and excited to share with you and everyone about the Citizens Independent Transportation Trust and how your half penny surtax is being invested in local transportation projects, particularly in the TP6 area, TPA6 area. Um, next slide, please. Now, the People's Transportation Plan half surtax funds. Um, are helping to move forward several transportation projects to help improve mobility in Miami-Dade County. One of them uh, has been already completed, uh, which is the Dolphin Station, which is located just west of the uh, Turnpike near the Dolphin Mall. Um, and this was an import. This is an important component of the Smart Plan. Uh, surtax funds are also helping demonstration projects. Um, and I'll be talking a little bit about another demonstration project a um, little later on. But these projects could include transit service, uh, new stations, or transit facilities. So next slide, and let's take a look at um, some of the PTP-funded projects within the TP6 area. Okay, so as Paul mentioned before, the Doral Trolley now also serves the FIU campus, um, and this is one that is being funded by uh, surtax dollars. And I wanted to include here on the on the PowerPoint the schedule, which is now operating on weekdays from 6 a.m. to to until 10 p.m. and on Saturdays and Sundays from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. Um, another project that also is being funded with surtax dollars is the Panther Station that's going to be constructed at FIU. And this is going to serve both students and the general public. And approximately $6.8 million of your surtax dollars are going to be going towards the construction of the Panther Station. Also another component of another important component of the SMART plan. And as I mentioned earlier, um, in March of 2020, the Dolphin Park and Ride Station was completed, uh, which is providing a very viable transportation alternative uh, for the east-west corridor of the SMART plan. Um, now, before, because of COVID, and, and, and um, they had temporarily suspended the service, but recently, uh, in the beginning of March, the TPW started 
providing service again from that station with limited weekday um, service. Next slide, please. Um, and another important project that um, is not funded by TPTP, but it's being serviced uh, in the TPA6 area, is the on-demand service uh, at FIU. Now, this is uh, being provided by Freebie. Uh, it is funded by both FIU and the um, state of Florida. And this is um, an on-demand meaning that you have to request the service. And you can do so using the Freebie app. And uh, it operates Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Next slide, please. Now, I also want to take advantage of um, this opportunity to share with you a little bit about the Citizens Independent Transportation Plus Trust, which is a 15-member volunteer body that was created to oversee the, how the proceeds from the half-cent uh, sales, sales surge tax are being invested in transportation projects. Currently, we are accepting applications. We have three vacancies. We have vacancies in Districts 3, 5, and 10, uh, but we are apply, uh, uh, accepting applications for all other uh, positions also, just in case anything opens up in the future. And if you want to apply, you can do so by going to our website, www.miamidate.gov forward slash CITT, click on the Member Recruitment tab, and then you can get information and download an application. Or you can call us at 305-375-1357. Next slide, please. And I want to welcome everyone to please connect with us. Join us on Facebook at Citizens Independent Transportation Trust. You can also follow us on Twitter at GoICITT Go and on Instagram at Transportation Trust. Next slide, please. So there's my contact information. If anybody has a question, uh, please let me know. And thank you, for, uh, Host Chance and the TPO, for this great opportunity to share with you today. Well, thank you, Carla, for joining us. Uh, it's always a pleasure to get more information and to learn more about the CITT. And thank you for join, uh, Thank you for bringing that information to us. As you know, we have to go to the TPO Master Chef to see if there's any questions for your item or fixings. TPO Master Chef, you have the floor. Thank you, Host Chance. Great presentation, Carla. Thank let's you. see what we yes. Let's see what we have. Um, okay, how does the FIU Panther Station on-demand service work? Is this service available anytime someone needs it, or are there specific departure times? Good question. Okay, yes, uh, as I mentioned before, this is an on-demand service, so there are no specific departure times. However, it does operate between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. Um, and the way that you would request a ride is you would download the freebie app and then through there you can request your ride. Um, and they use small golf courts, that are, uh, golf cart style vehicles that are very comfortable and, you know, they can take you where you need to go. So I hope uh, students and the public will take advantage of this, this great service. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Um... That's all we have. Um, just checking. Oh, wait, there might be a question. Um, oh, yes. Can this portion of the presentation be shared? I think this would be helpful, helpful, helpful for my students at FIU. And um, okay. yeah, yeah. And, and I think I can help with that answer. We're going to be posting this whole video um, on our on the TPO's YouTube page. So uh, Carla will be able to share this um, and all the partners will be able to share it in their respective um, outreach materials and we will be getting the word out. So Carla, do you have anything else to say about that? No, just thank you for the opportunity. And yes, please share with as many people uh, as possible so they know about this great service and how the half cent sales surtax is being used for great transportation projects. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, host Chance and Carla, I think that's all we have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Carla. Much, much appreciated. All right. Our next transportation partner is from the Florida Department of Transportation, District 6. Good afternoon, Heather. And we would, I know we want 
everyone to have a great Earth Month experience. So what would you like to place on the menu today? Hi, those fans. I think we're going to go, go ahead and play the video on the Tamiami Trail Next Steps Phase 2 project. In the fall of 2020, the Florida Department of Transportation began the design-build process to complete the remaining 6.7 miles of the Tamiami Trail Next Steps Phase 2 project. This project is being managed by the Department of Transportation in coordination with the National Park Service. It is part of the Everglades Comprehensive Restoration Plan and will allow for an additional 75 to 80 billion gallons of water a year to flow south to Everglades National Park and Florida Bay. Several projects have been constructed along Tamiami Trail between Pump Station Structure 333 and Pump Station Structure 334. The enhancement started in 2008 when the Army Corps of Engineers constructed a one-mile bridge near Coopertown Airboat. In 2016, the Tamiami Trail Next Steps Phase 1 project started, which was the first design-build project between DOT and National Park Service. It provided for two approximately one mile bridges near Everglades Safari Park. The Tamiami Trail Next Steps Phase 2 project is currently underway and will elevate sections of roadway and construct new bridges in the remaining areas between S333 and S334. The project was awarded in September 2020 to the design build team General Asphalt Jones Benitez Joint Venture. The project's design is currently underway and construction is anticipated to be completed in 2024. The estimated project cost is $53 million. As part of this project, the team will be building six new bridges, improving and replacing seven large culvert crossings, and elevating sections of Tamiami Trail Roadway. Construction is expected to start on this project this spring. For more information on the Tamiami Trail Next Steps project, please feel free to reach out to me, Heather Leslie, at the number on your screen. You may also visit the department's website at www.f.miamiday.com. Thank you and have a nice day. All right. Thank you, Heather. All right. Thank awesome. you, host Excited awesome, to be here. Awesome. An awesome presentation. That was an awesome presentation. And right now, we're going to go to our TPL. Well, first of all, Heather, welcome. And this is your first time on our lunch series. So welcome to our lunch series here, our Taste of Transportation. You gave us a nice taste of, uh, of FDOT. So we thank you very much. And right now we're going to go over to our TPO Master Chef to see if there's any questions about your fixings or your item. TPO Host Master Chance. Chef, you have, the, you have the floor. Oh, thank you, Host Chance. Hello, Heather, did you have anything else that you wanted to share um, before I asked you any questions? No, we're really excited to be here. We're looking forward to this project beginning construction soon. So uh, I'd love to hear what the question is. Excellent, excellent. Okay, let's see what we got. Um, you mentioned the project will allow for an additional 75 to 80 billion gallons of water a year to flow into Everglades National Park and Florida Bay. Can you explain how? Yeah, absolutely. So the next, uh, the Tamiami Trail Next Steps Phase 2 project is a key component of the Everglades Comprehensive Restoration Plan. So the roadway currently crosses the Everglades and it forms part of the northern border for the park. The roadway itself, it kind of forms a dam and it holds water to the north. So with the construction of the bridges and the replacement of these culverts, we're going to actually be able to provide a more natural flow of water from the north down into Everglades National Park as well as Florida Bay. So this is a great quality, uh, it's a great project, excuse me, for water quality in South Florida. It's also another example about how the state is really prioritizing the preservation of the environment as well as maintaining infrastructure throughout the state. Okay, excellent. And we do have another, let's see, good afternoon. Can FDOT provide additional information about other projects in this district? Kendall Drive project west of 162nd Avenue has been going on forever and has se severely impacted residents in the area. Um, I don't know, Heather, if you're able to answer this, but um, it, I'll, that's a question on, on the board right now. Well, I can definitely direct the, the citizen to the department's website. It's 
www.fdotmiamidade.com. Uh, within the website, you'll have a listing of projects throughout the county as well as Monroe County. You'll be able to find the specific projects on this Kendall Drive project. Unfortunately, it's not mine, so I don't know more specifics. Uh, and there will be contact information for the community outreach specialist who will be able to help you out. I'll also work with Host Chance and Master Chef to see if I can get that to the right person over at DOT for you. Excellent. And we do have uh, the email to this individual, so we will definitely follow up. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Host Chance, that's, uh, and, and uh, Heather, that's what I have. Um, that's what I have. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. All Take right. care. We'll see you again. Happy Earth Month to you. All right. Let's keep this, uh, let's keep this transportation menu going. Next up, we have from the Florida Turnpike Enterprise. Good morning, Yvette, and happy Earth Day. What treats would you have for us to place on the menu today? Good afternoon, host Chance. Nice to see you again. It's nice to be seen again. <laughs> um, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Yvette Ruiz Paz. I'm the communications manager for Florida's Turnpike Enterprise. And today I will be talking to you all about the benefits of SunPass. So what is SunPass? Well, for those who are not familiar with it, SunPass is Florida's prepaid toll program. Uh, currently, there are construction projects underway that are converting many of our state toll roads to electronic no-cash tolling. Owning a SunPass provides an easy and convenient way to pay for your tolls. Let's talk about the many advantages of owning a SunPass. Uh, prov besides providing a hassle-free way to pay for your tolls, there are savings to be had as well. SunPass customers always pay the lowest toll amount in Florida, which could save an average uh, customer up to 25%. SunPass uh, works on all Florida toll roads, as well as roads in Georgia and North Carolina. You can also use it to pay for parking at major Florida airports and at the Hard Rock Stadium. We also offer easy ways to pay, access, and manage your account as well. There are two types of SunPass transponders currently available, the mini and the portable. Each provides specific benefits. Um, the SunPass mini is permanently adhered to your windshield and can only be used by one vehicle, while the SunPass portable can be taken with you when you travel. And both of these SunPass options provide SunPass Plus parking as well. Opening a SunPass account is a great way to save money on tolls. Compared to paying using a toll enforcement invoice, you can save nearly 25%. You also receive a $4.99 toll credit when you activate your account. Visit sunpass.com for more information and to convert to a SunPass account. In the near future, uh, SunPass will be debuting a new transponder, which will work with all Easy Pass toll roads in 18 states. We're very excited about this, and we will be offering new information on that coming very soon in the next few months. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, to learn more about SunPass, you can call our customer service line at 1-888-TOLL-FLA or log on to uh, our website, sunpass.com. Thank you so much, Yvette. Thank you so much. Yvette, you la did you leave us, Yvette? Oh, Here I you. am. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know the saying, people like to eat and run? I thought you was eating and running. <laughs> Not today, host Chance. I'm ready for Master Chef. All right, all right, now, all right. That's all I like to see. That's all I like to see. There, bring on the questions. Bring on the questions. <laughs> Without further ado, TBO Master Chef, you have the floor. Yes, yes. Thank you, Host Chance. Thank you, Yvette. Okay, let's see. Um, South Florida traffic seems to be back to our pre-COVID conditions. Have you seen an increase in toll plaza commuter traffic? That's a great question. Um, we do continue to see more and more customers at our service plazas statewide. 
And uh, we continue to offer um, a practice of increased cleaning at our service plazas. We also have uh, hand sanitizing stations and social distancing markers still in place. We are also offering uh, touchless payment options available for all our customers at all of our Turnpike service plazas. And we want to remind uh, customers that we continue to provide a variety of food choices, gasoline, dog walks, and restroom facilities for our customers. That's excellent, excellent. Okay, uh, let's see. All right, I don't see any, I don't see anything else. So thank you, Yvette. Great presentation as always. And host Chance, we're good to go. Thanks, right. guys. Thank you, Yvette. Thank you, TPO Master Chef. Next up is the Miami-Dade County Department of Transportation and Public Works, also known as DTPW, is here with us this afternoon. Good afternoon. Happy Earth Day, Mike. What would you like to place on the menu today? Good afternoon and happy Earth Day to all of you as well. Uh, thanks for the wonder, wonderful introduction, Host Chance, and thank you all for having me. As Host Chance said, my name is Mike, and I'm here on behalf of the Department of Transportation and Public Works Golden Passport Program. You may be asking yourself, what is the Golden Passport Program? Well, I'll clear that up for you. The Golden Passport Program is a program that is paid for by the half-cent surtax that Carla was speaking about earlier. This program allows for free transportation on all Miami-Dade transit to qualified residents of Miami-Dade County. Now I'll go over the qualifications for you. Next slide. For those that are 65 years or older, to qualify for the program, you just need to be a Miami-Dade County resident and you would prove that by providing a Florida ID or driver's license that has a Miami-Dade County physical address on it the card that you will be issued will be valid for 20 years. Next slide. For people under the age of 65 or 64 years of age and younger, you will also need to be a Miami-Dade County resident. Again, you would prove that by having a Florida ID or a driver's license showing a Miami-Dade County physical address. You would have to be on receiving social security benefits and you would have to provide your annual uh, eligibility letter um, and the card must be renewed annually to keep you into the program. Next slide. Uh, we also have the Patriot Passport which is for honorable, honorably discharged members of the military. You would also have to provide proof that you are a Miami-Dade County resident with a Florida ID or a driver's license showing a Miami-Dade County physical address. You would have to bring your DD-214 to show proof of honorable discharge. This is an annual base program, so your annual income cannot exceed $30,721. This card will also have to be renewed annually. Next slide. The way to apply, renew, or replace a Golden Passport is to currently use our website at www.miamiday.gov forward slash I'm sorry, www.miamiday.gov forward slash apps forward slash DTPW forward slash Easy Card Services app. Next slide. And some of the benefits of the Golden Passport program are you do get free transportation uh, throughout the, the county. It is valid on all Metro Rail, Metro Bus, and Metro Mover is free for everyone currently. It also gives you a discount if you are to use the Tri-Rail or the SFRTA system. Next slide. And that was all I have for you guys. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you again, Mike, for joining us uh, this afternoon. It's always good information to, to receive, and we hope people take advantage of those uh, benefits that DTPW offers. Without further ado, we're gonna have our TPO Master Chef see if happy if there are any questions for Mike's item or fixings. TPO Master Chef, you have the floor. Host Chance, thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. Let's see what we got. Okay, with COVID restrictions easing up now, can we make an in-person appointment to obtain a golden passport? Unfortunately, we don't have an appointment system in place. What we do have, though, is we do have 
uh, multiple satellite offices that are spread out throughout the county. And you can call 311 and they will be able to give you the locations for these um, satellite office. We do also recommend that you use our website that I gave you earlier uh, so you can process all of your Golden Passport needs without leaving the comfort of your home and you can do it at your own convenience. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, okay, now Mike and, and Host Chance, I, I, I don't think this is um, for Mike, but we do have um, kind of a, a CITT uh, DTPW question, which I just uh, got some information on. And and so when it's the question is, when will the Panther station be completed? And I know this goes back to Carla's, um, but since we have DTPW here, and I, I got some information, Mike, um, that it seems like that station is going to be um, completed in early 2023. So I, I uh, you know, um, for Veronica, who who put in that question, want to just make give that her give that answer now to her uh, while we have DTPW here on the line. So it looks like it's going to be 2023 when the Panther Station is going to be completed. Other than that, Host Chance and Mike, uh, I am good. That's all we have on the line. Ooh, thank you guys for having me again. Happy Earth Month. All right, Mike. Happy Earth Month. Happy Earth Month. Thank you, TPO Master Chef. All right, all right, all right. Let's keep this menu on the track. No pun intended. Our next transportation partner represents the South Florida Regional Transportation Authority, also known as Tri-Rail. Good afternoon, Genevieve. What would you like to place on the menu today? Oh, hello, hello, host Chance. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Genevieve Bajwa. I'm the Corporate and Community Outreach Liaison at the South Florida Regional Transportation Authority, better known as Tri-Rail. Next slide, please. So a little bit about Tri-Rail. We are known as the South Florida Premier Commuter Rail System. We operate 365 days a year through the Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Broward, and Miami-Dade County. We have 18 different train stations, um, and believe it or not, we've been in existence 31 years. On a normal schedule, we uh, run 50 weekday trains and 30 weekend trains. However, due to COVID, we are currently running on an amended schedule. Next slide, please. So some of the benefits of using Tri-Rail, again, we're available 365 days a year with affordable fares. We have free parking at all our stations and connections to all three major airports. We do also have connections to the Tri-County bus system, which is Palm Tran, Broward County Transit, and Miami-Dade Transit. And of course, you know, during Earth Month, we can do our part um, with reducing our carbon footprint by riding any form of public transportation. Um, you definitely save money on gas, wear and tear, um, maintenance tolls. We do have onboard Wi-Fi and a smartphone app that um, we have real-time train tracking information on. Next slide, please. So in the onset of the pandemic back in March, we implemented a number of different safety protocols to help keep our riders and our crews safe. We've increased sanitate sanitization of high touch areas. We've also installed hand sanitizer stations at our um, station platforms, as well as on board our trains. And of course, you know, due to the federal mask mandate, we do require all passengers to wear facial coverings. Next slide, please. So one of the major projects that we have been working on is the Tri-Rail Tri Downtown Miami Link. This is a nine mile extension that'll take you from um, our current rail corridor onto the FEC rail corridor, connecting right into downtown Miami, sharing a station with Brightline. And of course, none of this would be possible without our funding partners. And we're hoping, crossing our fingers, um, we ex expect service to start sometime in 2021. Next slide, please. And if you're not already giving us a like or follow on our social media platforms, I highly encourage you to connect with us where um, you can learn on, get to know all things Tri-Rail and other transportation. And that's it for me. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. All right, Genevieve, thank you so much. Very good information. I know a lot of people 
are interested in that connection to the downtown Miami area. Without further ado, we're going to go right into the TPO Master Chef. Ma TPO Master Chef, you have the floor. Thank you, Host Chef Chance, and thank you, Genevieve, always for being with us. All right, let's see. Okay, well, what is what is the closest trial station to the FIU main campus? Okay, so that's a great question. You would have to connect to the Metro Rail and you can connect either exit off Tri-Rail at the Metro Rail Transfer Station or the Miami Airport Station. You would take Metro Rail to the Government Center and then from there connect to Route 11, that'll take you to FIU. Um, also just wanted to add that students do get a 50% discount for riding Tri-Rail. Excellent, excellent. We we like those discounts. We like those discounts. Um, <laughs> all right, host chance. Um, that's that's all we have. Thank you, Genevieve, so much. Thank you so much for having me. All right, all right. Thank you so much, Genevieve. Until we see each other again. Happy month. Happy Earth Month. Next up, we have a brief video for you to watch. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this video brought to you by the Miami-Dade Parks, Recreation, and Open Spaces. Hi everyone, I'm Sue Kavalerski and I run the Bike 305 program for Miami-Dade County. Most of the municipalities here are familiar with Bike 305, but for those who aren't, please let me recap what this initiative is and how we can help municipalities like yours. In 2012, Mayor Carlos Jimenez launched Bike 305 to engage and inform residents about safe cycling practices and encourage them to consider cycling as not only a recreational activity, but also as a way of commuting to work, school, and other destinations. Bike 305 works by partnering with municipalities in training staff and law enforcement to organize community bike rides, provide free bicycle helmets and helmet fittings, and educate residents on the right way and safe way to ride a bicycle and also where it is legally correct to ride a bicycle. Bike 305 is always available to assist municipalities, events, rides, and other gatherings. One of the goals of Bike 305 is to get residents out of their cars and use a bicycle to get to metro rail stations or bus stops to where they can either park their bikes or travel with them on metro rail cars or buses to their final destinations. Bicycles can be that first or last mile choice for connecting to public transportation. The cities of Aventura and Miami Beach are great examples of how municipalities are planning on-road bike lanes to offer space on-road for residents who are choosing to travel by bicycle. Bike 305 can assist municipalities plan for that kind of bicycle infrastructure. Perhaps one of the silver linings we have seen during the COVID-19 pandemic is a steep increase in bicycling. As a result of closed gyms, spending more time with the family at home, and a safe way to recreate outdoors, bicycle sales have skyrocketed. As more residents are taking to bicycles, now is the time to make sure residents know that cycling can be a true transportation alternative. Bike 305 is here to help you do just that. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Sue. That was awesome. Uh, it's always good to know a little bit more about Bike 305 and what we're doing uh, to help people get out and be friendly, pedestrian, pedestrianly, and also bike friendly. All right, so we'll be moving now to our next transportation partner, which is the Miami Dade Parks and Echo Adventure. And with this being said and being Earth Month, they have a fantastic video for us to watch. So get your popcorn ready. Well, not too much popcorn because the video is not that long. <laughs> and after the video, you're going to hear from my friend, Freddie. Let's roll the video, please. Adventure is more than a place. It's also a state of mind. And if your mindset is all about exploring, You'll love the eco-adventures in Miami-Dade County Parks. Go from green paths to blue waterways in a single day. On bikes, kayaks, or by boat. Or join a nighttime owl spotting walk. 
Out here, it's all about freedom and epic wide open room to roam, but also smaller spaces you'll love getting to know. Explore Miami's natural side and seagrass beds and secret mangroves, unspoiled sandy beaches, coastal forests, and rare hammocks. From water to wildlife to wonder, find your own eco adventure and come see Miami a little differently. Well, happy Earth Month, Post Chance. I'm sorry you cannot see me live, but I'm out in the park in one of our community gardens harvesting for a great buffet of nature activities happening in a park near you. So thank you for having me today. Let me put my basket down as I see our presentation is rolling. And Miami-Dade Parks is one of the third largest parks department in the nation. And you see on the first slide that we are actually the most diverse in the nation. We've got something for everyone. Next slide. But I'm here representing Miami Eco Adventures, connecting our community to nature. Next slide. Miami Eco Adventures is part of the Education Extension Conservation and Outreach Unit of Miami-Dade County Parks. We have five nature centers and we manage and protect the green spaces and nature preserves and also offer recreational activities on land and on the water. Next slide. As you can see, every great community has a great park system and Miami-Dade County Parks offers great opportunities for all ages and all abilities. Next slide. So here you could see in the green starburst, all of your nature centers. We have five nature centers and satellites around the county. So you could continue to self-explore the trails or book your next adventure with Miami Eco Adventures. Next slide. We offer hands-on educational opportunities, either virtually or through outreach opportunities. We could visit you or you could visit us. Next slide. We also have community adventure programs. These could be scheduled with our community programs or we also offer private adventures from archery to bike rides to cleanups. Become an eco hero with us. Next slide. We have wonderful opportunities and stay connected to nature. We have a buffet of great activities, recreational, historical, and of course, we've got opportunities in a park near you. Book your next adventures with Miami Eco Adventures. That's all, Host Chance. Fanny, thank you so much. Uh, you know what? I like that saying, either you can visit us or we can visit you. <laughs> I like that, Fanny, I like that. All right, so you know the routine now, Fanny. It's not your first time. This is your second time around, so you, you're a veteran now. So now we have to go to our TPO Master Chef to see if there's any questions about your fixings or item. TPO Master Chef, you have the floor. Thank you, Host Chance, and thank you, Fanny. This is such an important program for the entire Miami-Dade County, so thank you for being with us. Let's see what we have. Um, <clears throat> okay, will there be any eco-adventure summer camps available this summer at Tamiami Park? or other Miami-Dade parks in the area? We are so excited. And thank you for offering us your table of information because yes, the answer is yes. We are planning for a fun, safe summer camp adventures throughout the county. In fact, Tamiami will be hosting, coming back, our cheer and basketball. But we have a camp for more than this set. We have virtual camp. We have general camps for $45, nature-based camps from Zoo Miami, Eco Adventures and Daring, sports camp, performing arts, and of course, 
our therapeutic recreation and inclusion for children with disabilities. We will have a camp for that. Oh, that is awesome. It's great to see that the, the uh, Eco Adventure Summer Camps are back and running. And uh, I'm sure the kids are gonna be excited. And thank you so much for keeping us updated, Fanny. We really appreciate it. So host chance, I, I think that's all I have for, for this uh, for this item, food item. Thank you. Thank you, TPO Master Chef. Thank you, Fanny. Man, the energy, the energy, the energy. Just keep it going, Fanny. Keep it going. Thank you so much for joining us today. This menu board is getting full, super full. But I think we have a little bit room, a little bit more room for a couple more. So let's keep it going. Here's a video from the South Florida Community Services. And after the video, you'll hear from my friend, Priscilla. If there's one thing the last few months have taught us, it's that we South Floridians know how to adapt to any situation. We've revisited the ways we do business, all the while looking out for each other as members of a common community. Together, we all play a role in keeping South Florida one of the most desirable places in the world. And South Florida Commuter Services, a free program of the Department of Transportation, is doing our part to help commuters find ideal travel options and avoid sitting in traffic. We help businesses set up and improve parking, carpooling, and vanpooling programs. We assist users in the toll exempt use of 95 express lanes and even offer free or subsidized transit passes to commuters. We also offer comprehensive training on how to maintain productive measures while staff work safely from home. We go the extra mile to share this information with the public through a variety of marketing strategies. So when you run into us at one of our many events, that is, when we can start meeting in person again, ask us the hard questions. And even though we're working from home for the most part, our friendly staff is still available over the phone and our award-winning website is overflowing with information, resources, and opportunities to help you sign up for the many free benefits our program offers. The people who are the backbone of our local economy are slowly returning to buses and trains. Carpoolers and vampoolers are coordinating schedules again, and those who are going to continue working from home are formalizing those plans with management. Through it all, South Florida Commuter Services is here and ready to help. We look forward to hearing from you. All right, Priscilla, you have the floor. All right, thank you, host Chance, and good afternoon, everyone. So the video that you just watched was a menu of services we offer here at South Florida Commuter Services, and they're all free. They're all funded by the Florida Department of Transportation. So in today's main course, we'll be highlighting our Guarantee Ride Home, which is a program dedicated to all commuters who carpool, vanpool, ride transit, bike, or walk to work at least three days a week. We all know that when you choose not to ride your car every day, things can happen. Maybe your carpool left early, or maybe you have to work too late. That's why a Guarantee Ride Home program exists. And the best part about it, it's completely free. The government will actually pay for your free Uber, Lyft, or taxi cab rides home per year in case of an emergency. So to benefit for the Guarantee Ride Home program, all you have to do is register with us, and you can do that by either giving us a call at 1-800-234-RIDE-7433 or by visiting our website at 1-800-234-RIDE.com. Back to you, host Chance. Thank you so much, Priscilla. Always good information, and I just love that video. It's a great video. All right, so Thank now, you. as you know, we got to go to our TPO Master Chef to see if there's any questions about Priscilla's items or fixings. All right, host Chance, and hello, Priscilla. Let's see what we have for you. All right, I carpool with my coworker four days a week. That's good. And we alternate cars to minimize the wear and tear on our vehicles. Do we qualify for your carpool program? All right, thank you, uh, Master Chef. That's a really good question. And yes, you do qualify for our, uh, for our carpool program. Um, all you have to do is register with us, um, either going on our website or giving us a call. But yes, that's very smart too, to alternate cars so you don't put too much mileage and wear and tear in one car only. Thank you. That's a smart carpool I think I need to join. Yep, that is very smart, absolutely. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, let me 
me see. There's nothing else, host chance. Uh, thank you, Priscilla, so much. Thank you All guys right. so much for having us and happy Earth Month, guys. Thank you. Yes, happy Earth Month. Happy Earth Month. Hey, let's keep the menu going. Our next transportation partner is the South Florida Van Pool. Good afternoon, Natasha. And what would you like to place on the menu today? Hi, good afternoon, host Chance. And placing on the menu today in the spirit of Earth Day is van pooling. So no better way to celebrate Earth Day than to join a van pool. Next slide. So what I'm gonna go over is what is a van pool, why it matters, why the employees love it, uh, our COVID-19 response, and of course, how to join a van pool. So van pooling basically is like a large carpool. We group four to 15 people together and they'll meet at a central location and they're basically share their commute back and forth by with our vehicle. The participants in the van pool actually share the responsibilities of driving. Next slide. So the reason that employees actually love van pooling is number one, we provide that vehicle. So kind of like what Priscilla was talking about, using the wear and tear, you're actually gonna use the wear and tear on our vehicle. It's a month to month convenience, so you can cancel at any time. There's no long-term commitment. Included is the comprehensive liability and uh, coverage up to a million dollars, as well as collision for the vehicle itself. Full maintenance program, so any kind of wear and tear on the vehicle, oil changes, any kind of roadside issue, that is 100% provided by us. Most importantly, why does everybody love van pools? Is the savings. So you will save significant amount by joining that uh, van pool and sharing that expense between all the riders in the van pool, sharing on the cost of the vehicle, sharing the gas, the tolls, as well as the wear and tear on the vehicle. So you all will share that expense together. Next slide. So what I do is that I will work with actually employers and we'll group clusters of individuals together that live 15 or more miles outside of their work site. Um, generally, they'll live within a three mile radius. They'll join maybe a park and ride, they'll meet there, um, and they're gonna share their commute back and forth to work. You know, Should there be an emergency, just kind of like Priscilla had mentioned about the guaranteed ride home program, they can take advantage of that and at least have it a way back home. Next slide. So as far as COVID-19 response, we are giving the clean car starter kits for any of the new van pools that start or join back. Um, they're gonna be given a paper towel, they're gonna get a disinfectant pod, gloves, as well as a mask. And it is federally mandated that van pools do have to wear a mask as well. Next slide. So very easy to join a van pool or start your own van pool. Simply go to commutewithenterprise.com, click on join. If you're just looking to join a van pool, you as yourself, you can click just me and we can actually locate a van pool that's already in existence or you click on me and my friends and I'm gonna get in contact with you to provide you an estimate on your van pool. So the next slide, what we'll talk about is when you are joining a commute and it's just you as an individual, it'll give you a couple routes that are already in place so we're gonna connect you with those van pool riders and that coordinator so that you guys can discuss joining that van pool. Next slide. So my information is there listed below. Again, reach out to me at any time directly. My email is listed there um, or simply go to commute with the enterprise and I'd be happy to give you more information on the cost and more details about the program specifically for your route. Thank you so much. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you so much. And uh, hopefully people are signing up right now as we speak. It is lighting it up and saying, sign up, sign up, sign up now. <laughs> All right. So as you know, it's time to go to our TPO Master Chef to see if there's any questions about your item or fixings. TPO Master Chef, you have the floor. Thank you, Host Chance, and thank you, Natasha. What a wonderful item to end on for Earth Month. And talk about no wear and tear. Yeah, let's take one of your vehicles and put wear and tear. That's the <laughs> ultimate. Thank you so much for everything you do, especially during Earth Month. Um, yeah. Let's see what we have. Let's see what we have. Okay, I had registered for the Vample program prior to COVID-19. 
but have now been working home for home home for one year. Okay. I was told we will return to the office in August. Will I need to re-register or do anything to reactivate my account? That's a good question. Yeah, that's actually a great question. Um, obviously, COVID did affect us and we did lose some samples. Um, going through that right now with actually West Palm Beach VA and they are joining again. We do have all their information, but essentially it is starting over. We have to get them registered, um, set up that van pool, and of course, deliver the vehicle. Um, so best way to do it, either A, contact me directly, I'll guide them through that process, or just simply go to the website and then I can be in touch with you that way so that I can get your commute, your schedule, and make sure that we can get that van delivered as soon as possible. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so yeah, you know, a lot of people have been working from home and we're starting to get back into the office. So what a great question and thank you for that answer, Natasha. All right, Absolutely. let's see. Uh, host Chance, uh, that's it. That's all I have for Natasha. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank Natasha, you so much. for joining us. Thank you again, TPO Master Chef. Well, I don't think we have room for any more items on this TPO lunch menu. The travel, hopefully you're full, right? Because the transportation menu is full, <laughs> completely full. Let me take this time to say thank you to all of our taste testers for joining us today and all of our transportation partners, AKA transportation chefs that served up all kinds of dishes for us today by providing important transportation information for those who work, live and play in TPA six. Oh, hold on. I think I'm I'm seeing a message here. It says we want more jokes. Oh, oh who put that in there? Must have been Mark Henderson. Just joking. <laughs> oh, you want more taste of transportation, it says. That's what it says. They want more taste of transportation. Well, your wish is our command because we have one more transportation planning area to cover. That's right. We have one more event lined up that the next Taste of Transportation Lunch Series is scheduled for Tuesday, May 11th, 2021. And it will feature the city of Miami. If you enjoyed this segment as much as I did, share it with your friends, your family, your coworkers, as we get ready for the next virtual event in TPA 7. And as a friendly reminder, if you have missed any of our Taste of Transportation Lunch series, you have the opportunity to view all of them on the TPO YouTube channel. We hope to see you on May 11th. Have a great afternoon, everyone. And again, happy Earth Day.